We're going to go on to the Empowerment Project. We actually have three programs implementing empowerment in Connecticut quite successfully, but we chose one to talk with you today. Empowerment is a community level HIV prevention intervention for young gay men. So uh, unlike 3MV that works in groups, this one really works at changing the social norms of the entire community. So it's a community level intervention targeting those social norms. It's developed by and for young gay men. And um, a lot of these interventions actually are. Um, I think I heard earlier that D, D up was not, but it actually was. It's an adaptation of POL that's developed by and for young black MSM. So there really was a lot of input into these from the target population themselves. Um, it uses formal and informal outreach discussion groups, creation of safe um, spaces, social opportunities, and social marketing. And I think there is misconception um, among other providers who don't work with these interventions about what they re are really about. I've heard more than one person say, oh, those people are just having a bunch of parties. And actually, having parties is a part of empowerment. <laughs> and, um, and it's all that social stuff that you heard um, Stefan talked about earlier. So the theory and the evidence behind it, it's based on a theory of diffusion of innovations. And what that theory states is that members of social systems adopt new behaviors when they see their peers adopting them as well. Um, so it's very social. And the evidence was that it significantly reduced unprotected anal intercourse specifically was what they measured among the participants. Core elements, I should mention, um, all Debbies have core elements. Those are the things about the intervention that cannot be changed because it's what made the intervention successful. So when we're talking about core elements for empowerment, it's to regroup a core group of gay men to design and carry out the activities of the intervention. To establish a project space where your activities can be held. Conduct entertaining venue-based outreach by teams of young gay men. So you are partying. Sponsor social events to promote community building among the gay men. And then convene peer-led one-time discussion groups where that's where your prevention stuff's going to come in. And conduct a publicity campaign about the project. OK, so um, now I would like to ask um, Samuel Bowens. Um, he is um, the HIV prevention coordinator at the Waterbury Health Department right here in Connecticut to talk to you about their experience with empowerment. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in June of uh, 2009, um, the Waterbury Health Department implemented our um, um, empowerment project, also known as the M Team. And the guys joke with me sometimes because the first um, uh, event that we did, I called it the A Team. I was having a flashback of one of the old cartoons back in the day. But they are called the M Team, and it stands for Motivation, Teamwork, Education. Um, achievement and of course empowerment. Um, this is a um, flyer that the uh, core group members have come up with. Um, our uh, empowerment um, program core groups meet um, every Wednesday at uh, the Waterbury Health Department from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Um, this uh, particular intervention we felt was well overdue and needed um, in the greater Waterbury area. Uh, to date there's only one gay venue um, which is a straight club um, that does a gay night on Wednesday night. Um, we uh, have met with one local high school um, gay and lesbian program, um, and, uh, which is predominantly um, lesbian uh, membership. Increased uh, numbers of um, identified MSM seeking services through the Waterbury Health Department um, red flagged to us that there was a need. Um, to implement such a program as the empowerment program. Thus, uh, Evelyn Morales, who was the Waterbury Health Department at the time, um, she ran both departments, um, care and prevention program, and she recruited me. Um, at that time, um, I had worked with the Waterbury Health Department for a couple years because I had owned the local business. Um, it was a bar, and um, I had a lot of insight, so I thought what was going on in the community where the guys were hanging out and what the cool things were to do. So Evelyn and I kind of uh, built a great relationship with each other and she felt that um, 
I was the person that could make this uh, come alive because of the contacts that I had with the community. Not only being um, a gay man myself and being proud um, of uh, being gay, but um, having a very good rapport with some of the young gentlemen that I work with um, throughout the Waterbury area, mentoring per se, um, because I didn't have that growing up um, in my early gay years. And um, having someone that was focused on uh, not just the party scene and um, just out having a good time, which are, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a cool thing. But my focus was to um, relay to the young gentleman that there is so much more to being gay um, and so much more that you can use all that energy um, and focus on some more of the positive, positive things like educating each other and um, spreading the knowledge of safer sex and HIV awareness. Um, this was one of our uh, first uh, empowerment meetings um, that we had. Um, as I stated before, we just felt that there was a red flag and we definitely needed to reach out to the Rainbow family. So um, we implemented this program on June, on June of last year and we're coming, actually this month is our one year anniversary. Um, and we're educating them on empowerment requirements, goals, um, and recruitment um, techniques. Ellen and I sat down with the um, care and prevention programs and we educated our staff members so that they would know um, what empowerment was all about. So when they came in contact with um, identified MSMs through CTR um, or any of the outreach community um, uh, events that we were doing that they could definitely um, give them a brief description of what it was all about and then um, send them over to my office and I can go a little bit more in detail to them about what it was empowerment was all about. Um, as the uh, team began to recruit through CTR Street Outreach and Bar Zaps, our outreach recruitment provided um, um, proved to be uh, effective and successful. Our first core group meeting consisted of 12 um, adverse, um, excuse me, diverse members strong. Um, we had a little mix of everybody, so when we talk about the Rainbow family, there was definitely a rainbow of um, young gentlemen. Um, very interesting uh, enough, we had a transgender that came to us, and um, it was kind of heart-wrenching that she really didn't know where she fit in. And I spoke with Vivian and says, you know, the empowerment program is about educating um, and protecting and uh, supporting each other. And um, we need to find a way to uh, make this person fit. So we gave her a shot. And her name is Tatiana. And uh, she has um, proven to be very effective. She is one of our strongest outreachers. When she goes out to the community, let me tell you, she's not afraid to approach anyone. She gets the message across. She can tell you from A to Z what the Waterbury Health Department does, what the empowerment team is all about. And um, she's just proud and happy to be a part of the empowerment team. Um, as I stated before, the attendance um, was consistent and the core group members were excited to learn. Um, some of our recent, um, uh, these are just pictures here of uh, us just having a good time at some of the core group uh, meetings. Some of the, um, some of our greatest uh, successes, I should say, um, to date is, uh, I'm just trying to move here to the slide. I didn't realize I had so many pictures here. Um, but it just goes to show you that we're having a good time, you know, and the, um, the team is serious about what they're doing. Um, this here was uh, an event that we did. We had, their, they're called the Watermelon Crush. They're a local dance group. Uh, and the girls, actually the young lady um, in the center there, her mother works with the Waterbury Health Department. And they um, came to me and said, you know, we just want to be a part um, of what you're doing. My mom has told me so much about your program and we have a lot of friends in school that are gay and they really don't know where to go and you know this would be great for us to just be a part of what you're doing. So we thought it was really cool idea. Um, the success that um, is so great right now um, is that we recently um, were approved to advertise with Waterbury Bus um, Transit. Effective next month, this ad that you see here is going to be um, uh, spotlighted on um, all the buses, uh, not all the buses, but uh, quite a few buses um, throughout the city of Waterbury. Um, they'll be on the sides and on the inside um, of the bus line, so we are excited about that. 
we have found that um, changing the venues um, from the health department um, versus, you know, the whole health um, department thing kind of scares and deters young people um, to coming to something that is really cool and can be beneficial to them. Um, therefore, we have implemented um, movie nights every third Wednesday at the um, Waterbury um, Library. Um, and what the guys do is they get together and they um, they show a um, uh, feature uh, educational MSM theme uh, title movie. Um, they have refreshments and they sit down and have group discussion and they just talk about what's going on in their community. You know what I mean? How they can help and support each other. Um, in April of this year, um, we brought on Silvio Sores, um uh, to join the Empowerment Project, and he is our new program facilitator. His new ideas, his experience, unique and innovative um, teaching techniques have brought um, new excitement to the members. Um, within a three-week period, um, um, like any Thing. You know, I always joke with the guys and say, you know how we, and I'm talking from an I statement, gay people, uh, you know, if there's a dollar holler, you know, when I was in the bar business, I say, they're just not supporting me, you know what I mean? Every time a straight bar, you know, goes and has a gay night, you know, they're all over there and I've got the same three people sitting here, you know what I mean, and drinking, you know what I mean? And just like, we're not, we're not dedicated, you know what I mean? And um, uh, he uh, brought the numbers from uh, a low five um, to back up to 11 members strong. So that's where we're standing right now with our core group. So I applaud him um, on, on just a short period of time, um, getting the guys together, networking, going out into the community, um, and, um, and increasing the awareness of, of what empowerment is all about. Um, we have three members um, whose attendance has been impeccable. Um, and one of the members are actually here today, Jared Hayes. Um, he has not missed one core group meeting since we started from day one. And I think um, when you see numbers like that, and people might say, well, only three guys or only five guys that have stuck it out from the beginning in a year's term. You know, I, I go by an old saying that my grandmother used to tell me where there's two or three in the mist. You know what I mean? And um, it proves that when you have guys that are willing to dedicate their time and um, their knowledge and their experiences and pass that on to the next person and pass it on to the next person and pass it on to the next person, well, you know what, then it proves that this intervention works, you know? So, um, happy um, about that. Um, we keep prog uh, weekly progress notes on each individual um, in the core group, and Sylvia and I get together on a weekly basis and we review the progress notes. And um, to be honest with you, we've come a long way in a year's time, um, uh, change behaviors, um, are evident, you know what I mean? When we sit down and talk real, real life situations with each other during our core group meetings, um, the guys um, are more aware of what they're doing. And like I told them from the beginning, you know, we're not trying to wash you clean as snow. You know, I mean, what we want you to do is be aware of what you're doing. And if you're out tricking three or four times a week and you wear a condom one time, that's harm reduction. You, we're being effective. It's working, you know what I mean? And, and what's going to happen is, is eventually, just like everything that you do, everything else that you do in life um, becomes repetitious and it just becomes natural, then putting on a condom is going to be the same thing and that's what you're going to keep on doing. And um, the guys are coming back and they're just telling us great things, you know, sharing their life experience and saying, you know, well, you know, when I first started here, I wasn't quite sure if this was for me, you know, and we've lost a couple of guys because of that um, whole idea of, well, you know, I, I don't believe this works or, you know what I mean, uh, um, I don't like the ideas, the statistics, the stats that are being thrown at us. I, a couple of people have made the statement, well, I identify myself as a gay man, not an MSM, you know what I mean? But the, the, the focus is, is that we focus on um, just educating ourselves um, and each other and protecting ourselves and protecting each other. Um, um, recently, um, some of the challenges that we've had, um, let's see here, negative responses when we're doing outreach. And uh, like I said, Tatiana is one of those people that she'll just keep on going at you, not in a way where you're aggravating or annoying a person, but to the point where um, she breaks the ice and before you know it, you're breaking out in conversation. Before you know it, a person is actually learning something um, without even knowing that you've interrupted their day, um, you know what I mean? And um, we've proven that um, being um, dedicated, focused, um, um, will prevail if we continue that. Um, 
We continue to educate through our core group uh, meetings and our interventions on HIV and STD awareness, um, and we continue to um, prevail. Uh, misinterpretations and ideas and opinions and theories of stats, like I stated before, are some of the negatives that we get from a lot of the young guys when we talk to them. And um, we believe, um, and this is very interesting because before I came to this um, format today, you know, I, I sat down um, at the um, core group with uh, the members of the team and I asked them, um, what are some things that you feel um, are important or that would it send the message that this program works, you know, and as I sat there, there were only six of us in the room and it just happened to be one of those days where it was nice enough that maybe everybody just didn't want to come in and sit down and have a good time and talk about some real life stuff. And the um, important thing came out of that and they stated that um, they believe that if you're looking for a legitimate friendship versus a hookup, then this program works for you. So retention, um, how do we keep young uh, MSMs interested? We assure, um, uh, let's see. Well, what we do is we um, assure them that the facilitator's job is to make um, their ideas come alive. Um, they have to put the work into it, and, um, and ownership is a powerful thing, and I truly believe that the members of our core group know that this is their program, and whatever comes out of it is because they, they wanted it to happen. Um, Silvio's doing an excellent job, like I said before, and um, our uh, Director of Public Health, Roseanne Wright and Shane Lockwood, have been very supportive. Um, I know they're in the process of um, working on their first annual summer uh, safety um, uh, event where they're, um, um, they've chosen a local venue where they're going to have a sit-down dinner and presentation and giving out awards and everything. So if you want to know more about that, then you can contact Silvio or one of the members in the uh, uh, core group. Um, Another thing that I just wanted to share as well is that um, we are also working on a three-month schedule right now um, due to staffing issues. We're kind of short, um, but we're going out every Friday with the mobile health van, and we're testing a minimum of 10 to 15 people will pop every time we go out. And we've um, uh, got together a three-month schedule where we have 15 locations where we will be um, out and about and conducting CTRs. And the cool thing about this is that the empowerment team came to us and says, you know, what can we do um, to assist you in this? And this is how strong and passionate they have proven to be because of um, uh, their dedication to the program. And what they do is now we set a table outside the RV. About four of us counselors can get inside the RV and test at a time. And what they do as it slows down a little bit, if there's not enough people out there, they start walking out into the community, knocking on doors, going into the Park, telling people, hey, you know, we've got some water, we've got some snacks over here, some literature, come and check out what we're doing, free counseling and testing. And from time to time, we will give um, incentives um, to the people that are um, uh, doing the CTR. Um, once again, I just want to um, uh, just reassure you that the empowerment program is a wonderful, amazing thing um, for young men. And like I said, we focus on 18 to 29. Um, one thing um, that I want to share also is that a lot of the older MSMs um, are asking, well, what about us? Where do we fit in? You know what I mean? So I think this is the beginning of something really, truly amazing that we've proven that is very effective and it works. Um, and maybe we can broaden the horizons as time goes on. You know, right now we're 18 to 29. I truly believe that that age um, category is important. We don't need to mix and match the older fellas with the younger fellas because we're all in a different stage in life and it's important. Um, we're not trying to make the young guys catch up. We want to, them to enjoy where they are, um, to be happy, to be safe and be well. Um, but um, something that um, I would love to see um, come to life at the Waterbury Health Department. So once again, I thank you very much for inviting me to share um, our empowerment program and um, have a good day. Thank you.